So, once again, Robert Kiyosaki has come out with some not really new information, but some information that you really should take in. Robert Kiyosaki tweeted this a couple days ago, and I kind of want to break this down because it's actually important, and I see some of my close friends and family still not paying attention to this critical advice. Robert Kiyosaki tweeted on the 29th of August, Why savers are losers. The Federal Reserve announces interest rates are to be kept low for at least five years as the Federal Reserve prints trillions in fake dollars. Tesla and Apple split stocks 4 to 1, printing fake stocks. Savers of fake money and fake stocks feel richer until the crash. Then gold, silver and Bitcoin are the biggest winners. So this is interesting because if you've watched some of our recent videos, you'll know that some very, very high profile investors have actually been touting gold and Bitcoin. For one, if you watched our most recent video, which should have been published by now, you'll see that Warren Buffett actually recently acquired a $565 million stake in a Canadian mining company. The company pretty much mines gold and Buffett actually ditched stocks in the banks in order to do this. So. I thought that this is very, very interesting. And not only is it interesting, Robert Kiyosaki has actually been talking about how he doesn't really like stocks because the valuation doesn't ever make sense and it feels as if it's fake money. Now, to be honest, despite what you might think, he does have a point. I mean, Tesla at this point, nobody really knows what's going on. People can argue all they want about the valuation, but if we're being completely honest, everybody knows that it's overvalued and only those making money from this overvaluation are the ones winning. If we look at what he's says here he says gold silver and bitcoin are going to be the biggest winners now why are gold silver and bitcoin the biggest winners well they're simply the biggest most notorious asset classes that are actually immune to the inflation we know what currently is causing the inflation it's the federal reserve printing trillions of dollars and pumping them into the market now under usual circumstances you shouldn't be saving money anyways and the federal reserve does print money normally but with the pandemic in full swing and not seeming to get any better, the Federal Reserve have gone from zero miles per hour to 100 miles per hour in terms of printing money. This means that the inflation rate is of course going to increase as well. Despite their target rate of 2%, the inflation is definitely most certainly going to be increasing quite a lot. What does he mean by savers are losers? Well, everyone who knows anything about money knows that if you're saving money in a cash format, other than your emergency fund, that money is going going to be a losing value because as inflation continues, the value of your dollars literally decline, meaning that the more money you have saved, meaning the more money you're actually losing. And most people who don't pay attention to finances don't understand this. And that's okay. If you're watching this channel, then you probably do pay attention to finance and you should understand this. If you don't, that's fine. But we're telling you now that if you're saving ridiculous amounts of money, unless you're saving for to invest it somewhere, maybe for like a house deposit or something, then that money is just going to sit and lose its value. So the reason gold, silver and Bitcoin are the biggest winners is because like I said before, they're quite immune to the inflation. You see, inflation happens because there's increasingly numbers of dollars in circulation. Whereas with gold, Bitcoin and silver, there are finite amounts of these, meaning that once they're there, they're there. It's a finite amount. You can't just pull more from thin air like the Fed is printing money, meaning that these in the long term are essentially going to be a lot more valuable than people think right now. I mean, people think that coronavirus is probably probably going to be the only market crash or market cycle or economic thing that happens. If you've read the book, The Black Swan, you'll know that things like this happen all the time and you can't prepare for them. So I would say that coronavirus isn't going to be the first thing that happens to the market in your lifetime. If you're smart and if you've seen the market before, you'll know that these things tend to happen on an eight to 10 year cycle, meaning that we can expect something like this to happen again, maybe within the next eight years. Now, although that seems far away, how quickly did the last five years of your life go? Pretty quickly, if you ask me. And I would say that with the inflation going on, with the coronavirus going on, and it's still not being wiped out with any sort of vaccine, I would say right now is a really good time to stock up on assets that the very rich are in. You see, the rich are actually stocking up on these assets because the rich actually know what's going to happen before it happens. Rich people, and I mean ultra rich people, not just the middle class family, are actually very, very smart when it comes to protecting their wealth. They actually often foresee what's going to happen before it happens. And they do this by not using some telepathy or anything crazy. They just hedge their bets in a smart and coordinated
coordinated manner. You see, buying gold is a very good hedge because it's a physical asset, something that's there, it's real, and something that's finite, meaning that if the worst case scenario does happen, then they're protected against another crash or perhaps another inflation. And as you could see from the last crash, Bitcoin has actually rallied quite a bit, and that's in direct relation to the coronavirus crisis. So if you think that Warren Buffett dumping his bank stocks for gold mining companies or Ray Dalio announcing that he's going to put $400 million into gold assets and you think that this is just a smokescreen or something that you shouldn't pay attention to, you're very, very wrong. I mean, if we look back on the future, you've seen that there are key moments in time that have made people very, very wealthy. And right now is a key financial moment. There are tons of people right now who are getting wealthy from the stock market, from Bitcoin, from gold and from silver. And to be honest, you don't want to be someone who sits on the sideline, sees these videos, sees what's happening, but doesn't take action. That is the worst kind of education. The one where you see what's happening, know what you should do, but you don't take action. If you do watch these videos, I'm not saying you need to go out and buy gold and buy Bitcoin and do this and that, but I would definitely say you should look at your finances in a different way, because if the ultra wealthy are doing something that you are not, then perhaps you may be doing something that you should. So to recap right now, yes, to be honest, if you're saving money in cash, you are losing quite a bit. But at the same time, you actually should have some savings. I mean, right now, it's a bit of a two-ended stick. On one hand, you want to save money because if there is another financial crash, you definitely want to have the cash on hand in order to be able to take advantage of it. I mean, look at what happened a couple months ago when the stock market crashed as bad as it did. Anyone who bought pretty much any stock across any industry is right now reaping the rewards of that bold choice and that timing. So I would say you definitely want to have some cash. But on the other hand, you don't want to have too much cash because too much cash means that you're missing out on your assets actually appreciating in value and if a crash does happen and if the inflation level gets too bad then the money you're sitting in your account it's not going to be worth much to do with anyways so i would say a well diversified portfolio is something that you should always be striving to have never be over leveraged because once that leverage is lost then you're going to be in a pretty bad financial situation and nobody really wants that so right now is a time where we can't really lose focus of the vision. Even though coronavirus might actually look like it's somewhat going away, this doesn't actually mean the market effects are actually going away. The effects of the market are actually still there, whether or not coronavirus completely disappears or not. There's still some long-term things that we are yet to see because something like this hasn't happened before. So it's definitely going to be really interesting to see what happens, but I would definitely pay attention. So I would say pay attention to the markets, pay attention to your portfolio, because right now it's a time where you can't really ease off the gas. You genuinely have to pay attention to what is exactly going on because right now there are a lot of rich people and a lot of ultra wealthy people that are making some key key decisions that you definitely want to keep a track of because you don't want to be someone who ends up with your assets in the wrong place and when the crash comes